Welcome back to the channel everyone. For today's Clash of Clans video, I'm your host Judo Sloth. We have a very exciting video today because a new organization has entered the Clash of Clans scene. Space Station Gaming, a huge organization and I have the privilege of being able to help promote them and what better way to kick off this partnership than to bring you a live 5 vs 5 war that space station gaming had versus one hive in the ewu now guys just to let you know there were two ewu community finals and because they overlapped we missed the first live attacks within this five versus five war so i have replayed them commentated over the top of them spoiler alert one of them is a three star and this was one of the most exciting wars we have had in this environment for such a long time be sure to leave some hype for space station gaming we will be doing live attacks after the first two replays but let's go ahead and get into it it. So this was the opening attack by Jeff Rowe that unfortunately we weren't able to catch live but let's check it out the hybrid attack it is so the Queen starts off on this left hand side taking out the archer tower King will drive up the side of the base in order to help with pathing one super wall breaker allows us to get the single but look at the scatter shot sitting there as well are we going to get that and move forward i certainly would hope so with this queen charge one balloon coming forward to test for black bombs always good to power a balloon through a rage spell if possible that just means that you might also help to take down the defense in comes a second super wall breaker and it will open up the area so that after the scatter shot goes down the queen can turn around get the eagle and two expos as well that is huge for the hybrid attack notice the town hall and the pathing as well i think siege barracks up to the one o'clock area there it is at 12 actually to set the funnel whilst the queen is relatively safe and taking out the clan castle troops we might as well start that at the top and you do need a little bit of time from the siege barracks in order to get that side down to help the miners and hogs through in they come with the royal champion inside that just to protect the royal champion often moving down to the end of the attack if you still have that royal champion and her ability it can be very very good grand warden's ability catches everything all of the hogs and miners that's what you want to do catch as many as possible clearly and they will move straight through the base here more hog riders out of that siege barracks we do have the heal spell in there baby dragon on the outside trying to just keep the miners into the center into the defenses that is what you need to do and that is what jethro does beautifully in this attack getting through the remaining splash damage and protecting as we mentioned the royal champion's ability miners finally go to the outside of the base but at this point there's not a lot of base left we still got that ability he probably wants to pop the ability early as well to try and redirect the royal champion straight to the single target there it goes pops that royal champion's ability to drive her to the single target pretty much get it down but the miners finish it off and he wipes out the rest of this base with the hogs and miners opening the war for space station gaming with a three star what an incredible queen charge that was provided perfect pathing for the hogs and miners couldn't really have gone any better for jethro that one a beautiful attack for space station gaming to start off the war the response from one hive was sebex using the yetis now this is an interesting base it's kind of it's very similar to a four corner style base we've got this little compartment at the bottom we've got a compartment to the right one to the north and one to the west but up to the north where the clan castle is we have four expos the eagle all of the heroes there is so much damage there you will see that turns out to be a really really important area of the base so the royal champion down to the six o'clock area really gets good value down there she wipes out all of the defenses helps pathing for the queen who will move up and around with the yetis so the royal champion goes down but look at that bottom area of the base it's already gone and we're already at 25 percent of this base down the Barbarian King on the outside of the base allows that pathing for the Yetis to move straight in. 
you know how important pathing is. You've seen it in the attack by Jethro there, how the miners and the hog riders stuck to the middle of the base and they ultimately got the job done. Now, I like the jump spell, gives us access into the scattershot and town hall, but the difficulty here is the barbarian king. He's lured all of the clan castle troops. They will come to the middle of the base and Sebex had a beautiful plan with the blimp coming across to this side as well trying to compartmentalize the base if you will and just take down the different areas scattershot goes down but unfortunately he got the pathing of the blimp a little bit off and the yetis decided to go for the elixir storage instead of the single inferno so that really cost him but then moving to the top of the base look at the damage here four ground expos dialed in just firing non-stop at the yetis look at all of that crossfire that is incredible it looks so funny just firing straight across the eagle artillery but that's how quick the yetis went down and despite a good attack and a really complex way of attacking trying to differentiate the different areas of the base it wasn't enough for Sebex as everything starts to fall here but keeping that percentage high and that is exactly what you need to do in these styles of wars so despite Jethro of Space Station Gaming getting the three star Sebex kept the percentage high and that means moving into the live attacks we are going to be commentating the rest of them live Moving into the live attacks, it means that it really does keep both of the clans where they need to be. There's nothing worse than a three star and a low percentage two star where the clan has a mountain to climb. But Sebex kept the percentage high and ultimately meant that anyone was still in this. It is lost John looking to get even further into the lead for Space Station. Yet easy it is this time though wanting to do better than Sebex in that last attack. Starting with the Grand Warden Walk, we do have the Siege Barracks that is selected. Where would he be coming in from? Presumably straight in towards the Scattershot, right in front of the Town Hall would be the ideal target here. I think that is where Lost John is coming in from. There we go, one giant to test. That will just tank a little bit for the P.E.K.K.A. coming out of the Siege Barracks. It will move up and around exactly where he wants it to go. Now the Yetis come in. Warbreaker has opened up that compartment and the jump spell will give access to the Town Hall. There it is, perfectly placed. Notice how he doesn't open the Town Hall compartment. You never want to hit the Town Hall directly if you don't need to. Lost John wanting to just sideswipe it here, hit the bowlers across to take it down, but not be as susceptible to the Gigabomb. We do have the Barbarian King, though, having other ideas, trying to go through the Archer Queen, stalling a little bit. Activates the Town Hall. That will get to work on the healers. They do take that Town Hall down quickly, but he's lost a lot of traction moving through the base. Could still get this, though, as the second Scattershot is down. Yet he's moving through. We've got a couple of Hog Riders tanking for the Royal Champion, which could be the saviour, the single target. Staying alive will lock onto the Queen. That will force the ability use here, and it is all about whether they can get that single target Inferno. He doesn't have a lot left for tanking, and it's not going to happen. It's not like he can even pop the Seeking Shield of the Royal Champion to help out. Queen trying to jump over all of the walls instead of just going for the single target Inferno. That might have helped Percentage a little bit, but I don't think it would have got lost on the three-star attack. So Space Station Gaming still ahead by that three-star we've seen very at the start of the war from Jeff Rowe, but unfortunately, this one's not meant to be. However, percentage-wise, it is right up there, guys. We always talk about that 90% benchmark, and Lost John is going to be in and around that area. It's going to be just short of it, but it is going to be close. It will be 86% once the Elixir Collector goes down. No, 85, sorry. So super close. It is still a good percentage. Lost John cannot be too disheartened about that. But due to Sebex getting that high percentage as well, One Hive do have the ability to take the lead here if they were to get a three star. But you'd far rather have the three stars in the bag. It is Infinity GB now using the hybrid. 
This is the attack which Space Station had the success with in the opening war. In that opening attack by Jeffro, one coconut loon does take down the, the black bomb, the Sam, very, very nicely. Queen going to be able to step forward. No wall breakers in the composition, so we're just trying to thin the base apart, and hogs and miners will be coming straight into the town hall area as the king is walking down the side. He's not taking a huge lot of damage. Really like that wizard as well, recognizing that the the barracks, the dark barracks, was not out. That could have potentially pulled the heart, the miners at least across to that side. They will now have direct access to the town hall. King wanted to come to the inside of the base. That could cost him because he will probably go down here. Queen charging forward, aiming for the Eagle Artillery, the enemy heroes and the CC. Miners in first to activate that town hall. Remember, they're faster than the Hog Riders are faster than the miners. So you've got to try and time them both at the correct margin so they stick together. They get through the town hall relatively easily. A heal and a rage left. Back end battle blimp towards the scatter shot. That will go down. There is the rage spell. Look at that beautiful use to get the scatter shot. The king and the queen. We don't get the king, in fact, unfortunate. But the queen went down, the scatter shot went down, and the inferno tower went down. That means moving through here, it's looking pretty good because we have the Royal Champion's ability left over. She gets through the single. Miner's on the outside. I hate to say it, Space Station could be falling behind here despite an opening three star because Infinity GB is probably going to finish this one off. We've got a minute left. Anything could still happen, but the healers, they keep the royal champion alive through the barbarian king, and that will almost guarantee the three star here for Infinity GB. Stepping up to get that archer tower, then falls the final few buildings, and one hive prime. They will take the lead here, but we're only two attacks in, so anything can still happen between these huge clans. Come on. Space Station Gaming, trail despite a three star. Two huge clans within the Clash of Clans community. One Hive and Space Station going at it here to qualify into the EWU qualifiers. Can you believe that? Can you believe how powerful this tournament is? So we have the community vision, which is right this which qualifies you into the qualifier to then move forward in the tournament. It's crazy. Some of the clans that are in the community division, the qualifier of the qualifier, that's the talent that we have within Clash of Clans right now. Space Station Gaming though, getting to work with that Grand Warden Walk. We have bats in the army composition. Yeti bats it will be. It's interesting this base because we should be able to clear out the middle pretty quick. It's interesting we could have got some good value from earthquake spells but needing the bat spells means the wall wrecker is used. We've got to be careful here. You've got to freeze that. There we go. Woo. Wall wrecker taking huge damage from the expos as well. It might go down. Oh it did. It went down. It provides access to the town hall. That's just about what we needed, but I think one further layer might have been even more beneficial. We've lost the Grand Warden's ability as well, so bowlers will take huge damage moving through this. Scattershot, still active and doing work. We do take that down, but this is where now we don't have a jump spell to get to that next Scattershot. One further wizard tower falls. Another one will go down. When that one falls, there we go. Now the bats come in because we can freeze the wizard tower and the eagle. But then moving through, there's not a lot of other splash. Here come the bats. We've got to get the freezers down. Froze the eagle and the wizard tower as predicted. Freeze it again. Ooh, good timing. Very good timing. Got the Tesla alongside that as well. Bats doing a wonderful job here. No freeze for this back end wizard tower and nothing to distract it. We couldn't get through it with the um, royal champion either. A couple of bats do get through it. Space Station Gaming doing work, lost a lot of bats to that wizard tower, but we could still get this. Time could be a factor, 35 seconds, 
it's looking good for Space Station to open their first war as an organization here in Clash of Clans with a win over one hive would be incredible. And it's looking like they're back in the lead. The second three star out of just three attacks. That's why they are Space Station Gaming. But don't write one hive off yet. They could still come back if they get a three in the next one, they're back in the lead. Pumper of one hive. We know how good Pumper is. The lineups here are crazy. I'm sure that one hive will equally be wanting to beat Space Station in their opening war. Both clans really pushing for the victory here, not to mention to qualify into the EWU tournament in itself. We have the drag bat attack strategy. So Pumper obviously feeling like the bats are good again on this one. We have single target infernos, which is often what you see freezable with the wizard towers in combination but obviously feels like with the grounded expos that the dragons are a better option than the yetis which you just seen by space station so much variety in the game right now beautiful freeze onto the sweeper but the archers within the clan castle really do a good job for space station here just stalling the dragons for a couple of seconds and they split up already this is huge for space station in terms of their defense love the battle blimp down to the bottom he's got to press it he nearly didn't press it he didn't get direct access onto the wizard tower and the single which definitely he wanted as the first building and the wizard tower is wrecking the balloons how crucial is that really like the tweaking around the bases though and i think i think he could get this single target goes down from the royal champion bats doing work but the four expos in the center are really really going to struggle and they're really going to put a lot of work in. It will be the defense. It looked so good. But the dragons splitting up and moving to the top. And not moving into the expo compartment cost him. Not popping the battle blimp over the top of the wizard tower was crucial as well. And he's super close because there's only one A expo left. If this goes down, he could clear the rest of the base because it's air, air troops. But it's not going to happen. I don't think he can target it without having to beat other buildings first. It's very close for Pumper. Beautiful coordination, trying to get through the base. It's still upwards of 90%, so it keeps the pressure on Space Station, but it does mean that they are back in the lead over the halfway point Space Station lead by a star, but one hive right on them in terms of percentage. If they slip up in the next few attacks and one hive do get another three star, they will take the lead. Here we go though, we have Zack of Space Station wanting to try and solidify this war. Hybrid attack it is. The blimp coming straight in towards this single target inferno gets crash damage from the blimp to take out the air defense straight away. Single goes down quickly, didn't use the rage because it was not needed. Notices that the scatter shot would be doing huge damage. Oh, he didn't quite get the wizard tower, but it's not really too devastating on this one. Definitely better to save the rage than to get the wizard tower because that's the only other value he would have got from using a rage spell. So rage versus taking out a wizard tower, it's not worth it, guys. Really like the recognition there from Zack. In comes that super wall breaker. No need to test the area. It opens things straight up and look at what the queen can get here. A scatter shot, the enemy queen, the clan castle and the eagle, but there's a lot of damage in this area. So Zack is going to have to be ready with the Rages and most likely with a Freeze as well. Then the Hybrid will come straight in towards the Town Hall. I like that a couple of buildings are already down. That just means the King's Pathing is a lot easier. Freeze onto the Scattershot, Enemy Queen and the Clan Castle Troops. If we get the Scattershot down, which we do, it makes it so much easier for the Queen to get through the Ice Golems. Now she's relatively safe. There's just a Cannon and Expo on her. We use the Rage, but it does allow Zack a couple of seconds 
seconds to shift his focus, get the hybrid moving through. King's on that outside. Early Grand Warden's ability. This looks really good. If the Queen can get to the Eagle, it helps with pathing for the Miners and Hogs, but also just really helps in terms of damage moving through the base. Healers swap across to the Miners, which is relatively good at this stage because the Queen's got all she can get pretty much. She does go down. A freeze was unfortunately used onto the Expos. Could have saved that for the Hogs and Miners moving to the back end, but it still looks very, very good for Zack of Space Station. A rage spell onto the Miners and the Hog Riders. They power through this area. We will have that back end Wizard Tower, but we've still got the Royal Champion's ability and we can get some hype in the chat for Space Station again because this looks incredibly powerful. The Royal Champ gets through the multi, has the ability, she will ping through the defences here and help Space Station on their route to their first victory, their first war as an organisation and it looks like they could be taking down the almighty One Hive to move through to the qualifiers of the the EWU, what a beautiful attack that was. Matty J of One Hive, they've got to get the three star here to keep them in this war. It is going to be the Yetis. They haven't had the best of success with this strategy, but they obviously feel they can take advantage of this base. I do recognize though, it looks like, I would presume from where the Grand Warden is used, we're going to be yetying straight in towards the Town Hall in the first scatter shot. but I don't like the looks of that back end scatter shot. A Siege Barracks currently selected could use a blimp to that back area, but there is a sweeper in that direction as well. So this is difficult for Matty J to get to that back end um, scatter shot. Four Earthquake spells, though, could be used right in the middle of the base. Siege Barracks used early on here alongside the Yetis. We're coming in not to the Town Hall area. We're going to try and sideswipe through the base. This is really interesting. A very interesting approach. In comes that Rage spell. Yetis get to the first scatter shot. They will get down to the Town Hall, then loop across to the middle of the base. Beautiful Grand Warden's ability. Protects the healers there as well from the Black Bomb. Town Hall activated, but there's not a lot for it. Wow, what a beautiful freeze spell that was. The wizards from the Siege Barracks were attacking the Town Hall, and the freeze allowed him to get the wizards take it out and protect all of the yetis the earthquakes do open up the middle they move straight in and that scatter shot will go down in a flash this is looking really good for Mary J and it will keep the war exciting it will mean that if space station want to win this they have to win it on their top performance not because one hive have made a mistake one hive keeping the pressure up now there's not a lot of yetis left but there's not a lot of defenses left either Matty j surrounding the base with any type of troops he can now still has the queen's ability royal champion helps to take down the multi and there you have it one hive keeping the pressure up with a three star attack of their own what an exciting finish we have coming down to the end of this one wrapping up to that 100 percent straight away let's quickly have a look four attacks each it couldn't be any closer on percentage one hive with literally one building one percent of a base gives you 0.2 percent in the lead but space station in the lead with a star so one hive need to get a three star oh no 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 scout watch no are you joking me what let me in. Oh, no. Oh, no. There's literally 30 people watching this attack. This is the only way we can get in. Scouting and then going live. There's 10 slots when you go scout and live. I was too slow. There we go. We're in. We are in. We've missed half the attack, but we are in. Kronos of Space Station with the Lalo now. It looks like... Let's try and backtrack here. It looks like Town Hall has gone down towards that left-hand side. We've got good Lalo pathing coming down. One scatter shot, two scatter shots down. Freezing the Eagle. 
Dragon will get into the center. I like the end of this, guys. We could be looking at a space station three star. Come on, guys. Let's get this one done. We don't have a lot of balloons left for this back end. Another haste. We've got a couple of loons for the wizard towers. Come on. We've got one more wizard tower, which the royal champion takes down. There we have it. It is going to be a three star from Space Station Gaming and it will mean that they cannot be beaten now. One Hive will not be able to catch them up even if One Hive get the three star. They are a star behind. What an incredible victory for Space Station to kick off their organization. The Org in Clash of Clans, another three star. All of the spectators, they couldn't have had any more hype. 14 stars. Let's very quickly look through the start of it. Town Hall does go down before the Lalo came in. So we use the King Queen down to the bottom took the single target inferno really got in and got the scatter shot as well look at the value he got there what even sneaky goblins sneaky goblins took out the town hall to that top area that was incredible fantastic recognition a town hall on the outside yes please the sneaky goblins took that out straight away and it means one hive now scratching their heads 97 percent total destruction from space station gaming are you kidding me what a performance and what an entry into clash of clans get some hype for space station gaming like i said i will be helping to promote them as well so man what an epic start we have had but level 8 pidgey will not be going out without a fight he will want to put up the best performance possible for one hive let's see if they can get it one of the most exciting wars we have had in a long time in terms of this five versus five action i'm just gutted that we couldn't catch the opening part of it live as well and just to build the excitement we couldn't get into that final attack from space station gaming live either too many spectators that's how popular this war is too many spectators you can only have 20 spectators and then 10 from the scouting view as well and that's it 30 people were watching that attack anyways we've almost got 30 in this one as well look it's going to be like that the whole time level 8 pidgey did get that single target inferno pulls the clan castle we're already a minute in we have seen attack score to the wire and fail on time using the yetis and normally it is if the attack is not started after a minute so we're all we're already over that point a minute and 15 gone before the yetis come in so level 8 pidgey really has to speed things up through the middle of the base now he does have three rage spells two jump spells and two freeze so all of his spells left over royal champion will get the scatter shot up to that area we'll also get the wizard tower so it's looking good for him two black bombs are soaked through the grand warden's ability that protects the healers often with the yetis as well one thing that can really mess you up is if the healers go down now look at the bowlers here the bowlers are really low on health they're trying to get damage value to the scatter shot but they're not getting pathing through the yeti mites are just not going down to the scatter shot for him and that he really needs it it's his last hope but it's not going to happen so one hive will end this one with a two star and despite some fantastic attacks by them they have lost this one and lost it convincingly due to the performance of space station what a start for them amazing stuff they really wanted to win this one as they do every war but still a near perfect 97 percent total destruction is incredible guys look at this as well level 8 pidgey putting his troops around the base doing anything he can to drive that percentage up but the realization that despite what he did in this attack one hive were out is really just daunting and it just means that that's it there's nothing else he can do but let's get some hype for space station gaming because as we come back to the board we have 14 stars to 12 97 percent and what a way to start off their 
entry into Clash of Clans than a victory over the almighty One Hive. What a beautiful, beautiful war that was.